I finally bought a new stock to add to my portfolio. I actually sold out of one and replaced it with Ally Financial. This is a stock I've been talking about for quite some time that I've been wanting to get into and I finally pulled the trigger. Of course, Ally Financial is best known as an online bank and we're gonna go into everything Ally Financial. And before I get started though, if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. I'm somebody that's very transparent. I provide diverse content. And speaking of transparency, I revamped the summary of my portfolio that I show you guys with every single video. So I'm excited to share this with you. So let's dive right in with that transparency. So if we look at my portfolio performance, you'll see it looks similar but different. So on the top left, I provided a portfolio stats kind of summary and added a few more things than I've had before. So I have on the very left the growth, so that's the percentage my portfolio is up or down. The gain or loss is the next one, which is my dollar amount in the green or red. And then I put my dividend yield, which is a yield that all the companies pay, and then my yield on cost. So what I've bought it at, and then of course with appreciation in prices, the real yield that I'm getting now with the market values and everything. And so you always wanna see the yield on cost be higher than the dividend yields that the company has. So I just thought this would be great to share. Of course, uh, if you're new, I divide it out between all the sectors. I have a few extra kind of sections. So I have a dividend ETF, I have an international. Uh, what I had to do with the healthcare on the very right is turn that vertically in order to fit it in and make it look nice and neat. And of course, there's the ticker symbol of each company below that. It shows you the percentage the stock is in the green or the red. And what I've added is in purple below every company, is my portfolio allocation. So how much I hold of each company compared to the total value of my portfolio. So for example, Microsoft, uh, right now the market value uh, allocation is 12.11%. It's my largest holding by market value. Uh, and so I like to hold things about 10% or less. Of course, it's okay to deviate from that. Microsoft is a high quality company. Uh, so yes, I just think this is providing more transparency. Of course, if you guys want to see anything, let me know, but I do want to keep it simple so it could be this quick uh, view and snapshot of my portfolio. So this is how my portfolio is doing. I'm slightly in the red by 1.2%. That's $500 of loss. Today, I'm going to be focusing and want to draw your attention to the financial sector. We have Bank of America, we have T. Rowe Price, Ally Financial, and then I have a financial ETF called FNCL which is a Fidelity Financial ETF. So it just allows me to diversify and add some safety. So what I want to do is in this video, talk about Ally Financial, go in depth, and then I have my metrics chart. If you haven't seen that, it's what I do to compare companies against each other. What I'm gonna do today is put Bank of America, T. Rowe Price, and Ally in that metrics. And it's not to choose a winner, but it's to compare and see how well I'm diversifying within my financial sector. So what I did is I had a bank called First National Bank or FMB. I only had $300 in that and with the market value it was at 400. So I took those profits and I allocated to Ally. Of course I had some other money on the side. So Ally now is almost, it's my second biggest financial stock. T. Rowe is still the biggest, but I wanna get Ally to the biggest. Um, and I provided some diversification within my financial sector because Bank of America, within the sectors, there's industries. So Bank of America is in the banking industry, T. Rowe Price is in the capital markets industry, and Ally Financial is in the consumer finance industry. So I, I, they're all in one sector, but all in different industries, where before Bank of America and my first national bank were both in the bank industry. So I feel I'm kind of broadening my diversification in my portfolio within my financial sector. So yes, Ally right now currently is down 3.5%. I will be adding more to this, which will bring down that average. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think of this new and improved kind of snapshot of my portfolio. And if there's anything else you guys might like to see, I'll see what I can do. Uh, but let's get right into this video. So Ally Financial, of course, it's an online bank and it was founded in 1919. Yes, it is that old but there are a few things to know about it. It was formerly a part of General Motors and used to be called GMAC or General Motors Acceptance Corporation up until 2010. When the financial crisis hit, of course there was hardships on the auto industry, especially General Motors. So what they did is they rebranded that part of their business to attract customers and they called it Ally Financial. 
GM did sell the last of its ownership stake in Ally in 2013. So now Ally is a digital financial services company and provides various digital financial products and services to consumers, uh, to consumer, commercial, and corporate customers, primarily in the US and Canada. It does operate under four segments. It has the automotive finance operations, which is its heaviest segment. This is the one that people focus on because it's a risk, but I also think it's an opportunity we'll talk about. Its second segment is its insurance operations. Its third is its mortgage finance operations, and its fourth is its corporate finance operations. So automotive, insurance, mortgage, and corporate. Those are its four segments. They also offer commercial banking. They have a very popular high yield savings account, which I make use of, and it just went up to 2%, so very attractive. With these rates going up, the Fed bringing up rates, it's bringing up these interest rates in these high yield savings accounts. So I'm getting 2% on my money, which is fantastic. Um, they also do investing, so you can go and buy uh, stocks on their app, on their platform. So they really do offer a decent amount of different products for their customers. Of course, it's an online bank only, so there's no physical branches, which I think saves it uh, expenses when it comes to those physical branches that other banks have to put up with. So I wanna go through uh, their website quickly and I wanna look at kind of a few things that they like to promote. So first, of course, uh, you know, we see that they have savings accounts and they do what's called buckets. So it's really cool. You can uh, put money into different buckets. You can spread it out. So if you want a bucket for a vacation, you can start putting money in that. If you want a bucket for you know, maybe buying uh, and improving your house, you can put a bucket for that. So you can break it out into many buckets as you want. And this is very innovative to me. I really love it. And so that's something that they really promote. Uh, I, I do wanna say their app is fantastic. I love using their app. It's so easy to use. It looks innovative and modern. If we look at uh, more of their website, we will see here that they you know, offer banking and they have CDs. They have other products as well within their banking, of course. Uh, you can do trading, like I said, the investing side of things. You can get home loans. Uh, and you can see here, they do a great job with making things look good in their app and you know attractive. Uh, if we keep going down, we will see here that they put little fun things. I kind of like when companies kind of think outside the box. So they say 55% of Americans find a strong budgeting and saving strategy to be the most appealing money management trait in a significant other. So yes, if you... Uh, bank with Ally or do business with Ally, your relationship is going to be stronger. <laughs> well, not really, but they're just saying that it does help. And so I just like little tidbits like that. I think companies that go you know, outside the box and just provide different things are just attracting more customers and making their products more attractive. Of course, they are highly uh, reviewed by customers and in, they were the best online bank of 2021 to 2022 by Money Magazine. So they have a virtual world, real life lessons. Fintropolis is a new world in Minecraft created by Blockworks in collaboration with Ally Mint to help teach students important financial concepts. So they're using this virtual kind of metaverse world to help educate others. And I think that's fantastic and just another opportunity. Who knows if this will get, you know, big or traction or not, but it's great that they're doing things outside the box, and that's what I like to see. They also have some statistics that they provide, which I thought was really cool. And we'll see here that with their banking, they have 2.54 million deposit customers with over 140 billion in total deposits. With their financial services, they're serving nearly 22,000 dealers, nearly 3.95 million auto customers, and nearly 2.64 million insurance customers in the US. Investing, they are serving 518,000 invest brokerage accounts, investing brokerages accounts that total 13.5 billion in assets. So that's great. Uh, their corporate finance, they have a diverse portfolio that spans 100 plus relationships and includes cash flow and asset based loans ranging from 15 to 250 million. And then they do all kinds of different lending. They, that's, that's what they're most heavy on is loans, lending. Of course, in the auto segment is their biggest one. If we continue to move on, I just thought it was kind of neat to kind of highlight that uh, Berkshire Hathaway boosted their ally financial stock holdings by three times what it was. And this just kind of uh, helps show me that a big uh, successful company 
is looking at Ally as a strong investment. And of course, that means they're going to see it as something that can make them big profits. So it just helps solidify even more my decision to buy into Ally. If we look at their stock chart, we will see here that over the five years, if I go back, they've been up 46.13%. Uh, so not bad performance, but of course, there's definitely other stocks that have performed well. So one thing that attracts investors to Ally Financial is their strong dividend. Right now, they pay out a dividend of about 3.66%. Uh, so anything above 3% to me is very attractive. And I think this is at a healthy range. We will see here that on the very right, uh, they have a low payout ratio of 17%. And they've grown over the last one to five years very he healthily at over 20%. And this chart uh, shows the stock price versus the dividend um, payout. So what's, or the dividend amount that they do pay out every quarter. So what's interesting to see is I circled two points. The first point is when, you know, their stock price was uh, kind of at the low point compared to the dividend they pay out. And then immediately after it shot up. I think that trend happened again. It's starting to go back down. I think it's hitting that low point before this stock starts to rebound and go back up. So that's just something I wanna mention. I think right now is a great time to buy into Ally Financial just based on history, on trends. And this is one trend I like to look at. Uh, if we look at their cash position, uh, you know, there's gonna be a few pain points now. So their cash has gone down quarter after quarter. And I think with the low interest rates we'd had over the last couple years, of course, they're going up now. Uh, and of course, with inflation, increasing expenses, is there something that did hit the financial industry a little bit harder, uh, which I think will turn around because now that interest rates are going back up, it's going to create a big opportunity for banks, especially Ally, to start um, utilizing those high interest rates to make some more money. If we look at their long-term debt, we will see that it has been trending up. Uh, not huge, but it is going up. So uh, debt is a double-edged sword. It could mean that they're really gearing up and reinvesting, so they're having to borrow some money to put into, you know, things that they feel are going to propel their company even further, but it also is debt, right? Debt is debt, so it's a double-edged sword. I, I don't see this as necessarily bad or good, but I would like to see it downtrend in the future, of course. Um, if we look at their net income, we will see that, of course, with the decrease in cash, the increase in debt. This also looks at expenses compared to sales. So everything together, we see that their net income has been going down, uh, which, you know, is something that I think will start to turn around again based on the higher interest rates. And I think Ally is very attractive uh, now that their high interest yield is at 2%. It's uh, going to attract more customers. And I think overall their company is going to attract more customers in the long term. So I do expect these all these to turn around into the positive, their cash, their debt, and their net income. If we look at what analysts think, we will see here that they're neutral, kind of on the low neutral and almost to the bearish. This is one set of analysts, and I'm gonna make a point later on, but I never go off of what analysts say because they have more short-term kind of viewpoints and it's their opinion, and everyone can look at different metrics and come up with their you know kind of bearish or bullish thesis. Uh, but I think it's important to show just to have another piece of information. If we look at their fundamental analysis, uh, they are considered highly undervalued, which I think is attracting Warren Buffett, which attracted me and other investors, because I think that means there's more potential um, upside, right? There's upside potential with a company that is highly undervalued. Their quality is still considered high. Their growth stability is slightly on the high end and their financial health is also slightly on the high end. So overall, it looks good. Now I think we move to the metrics chart. So I made a few changes here. Of course, we're gonna be comparing Ally, Bank of America, and T. Rowe Price. And this isn't to really choose a winner. It's just to see, am I pretty well diversified? Do they all have their own strengths in different areas? Or is one heavy on the strengths and the other two are weak? So if we start with the PE ratio, we'll see here that Ally is the winner. It's the lowest at 4.71. Uh, Bank of America and T. Rowe are both above a 10. Earnings per share trailing 12 months versus tri uh, prior trailing 12 months. We'll see that Bank of America wins. It's positive at 7.02%, where the other two are in the negative. If we take that out to five years EPS, we will see that Ally actually takes the win at 29.76%, where the other two fall in the 18 to 23% range. 
Revenue-wise, trailing 12 months, Bank of America wins here at 8.19, where T. Rowe and Ally uh, trail pretty significantly. But if we take that out to the five-year mark, we'll see a little bit of a different story where actually T. Rowe um, is, has the highest revenue growth over the last five years at 12.68%. Now, the cash flow growth, which I think is important, uh, T. Rowe takes it again at 19.51%. And then they go down kind of in steps, Bank of America at about 11% and Ally at about 5%. Now, dividend yield wise, we'll see that T. Rowe also takes it here at 4.03%. That is attractive, where Bank of America is at 2.63 and Ally is at 3.66. Uh, if we take the dividend growth, Ally takes it here. They grew 20% over the last year, where the other two were at 4.76 and at about 11%. Dividend payout ratio, Ally wins, they're low at 17%. Bank of America is decent at 28% and T. Rowe's a little higher at, four point, uh, at 46%. So Ally, as far as a dividend play, is the strongest. They have a low payout ratio, which means they're gonna be able to grow that dividend a lot more than the other two. So that's what I like uh, a lot about Ally. If we take uh, total debt to assets, the trailing 12 months, we will see here that T. Rowe has very little debt at 2.6%. But the other two aren't bad either, so uh, T. Rowe really does take it here though, and that's a great thing to see. Now, if we go to gross profit margin, the trailing 12 months, let me take a second to explain what gross profit margin is. It's the amount of money a company retains after incurring the direct costs associated with producing the goods it sells and services it provides. So the higher the gross profit margin, the more capital a company retains. So it's very important. Um, so You'll see here Ally is at a 45.73, Bank of America is at a 94.14, and T. Rowe is at a 48.77. They are in different industries, as I mentioned. The consumer finance is Ally, the bank is Bank of America, and capital markets is T. Rowe. So compared to their industry average, Bank of America won, um, and it is the highest overall. Uh, this is when I wanted to compare against the industry. Uh, Ally was higher than the industry. The only one that was lower than its industry average was T. Rowe. So Bank of America overall takes it here, which is you know great to see because it's one of my holdings. Now return on equity trailing 12 months. Let me first give a background on this. This is a new one I put in here. So return on equity is a gauge of a corporation's profitability and how efficiently it generates those profits. The higher the return on equity, the better a company is at converting its equity financing into profits. So equity financing is basically their shares, right? They're, they're saying, hey, we're gonna sell shares, take that money, and how well are they turning that into profits? Well, T. Rowe so far is doing the best at 27.48%, Ally second at 17.59, and Bank of America at 10.91. If we move on, shares outstanding. Ally and Bank of America over the last five quarters have downtrended each quarter, which is good. T. Rowe kind of was up and down, up, and then it went down last quarter. So Ally and Bank of America are both in the green. They're both been consistent re with reducing their shares outstanding every quarter, which is great for us investors and that helps increase their earnings per share. Now, I want to take this uh, opportunity to also look at their market caps. So this shows the diversification as well. Ally is the smallest at a 10.12 billion market cap. Bank of America is the largest at a 268.94 billion market cap. T. Rowe is right in the middle um, of course, more towards the low end, though, compared to Bank of America at a $26.86 billion. So what I want you to see here is they're pretty even. I think they're offering me good diversification. They all have strengths in different areas pretty evenly. Allies kind of the dividend play, the value play. Bank of America is kind of the big, sturdy bank that's going to offer, I think, sturdy profits. T. Rowe has its strengths uh, of its own. Right now, with the economy you know, having some struggles, T. Rowe follows what the economy does. If it struggles, it's gonna go down. If it's strong, it's gonna go up. So it's kind of predictable in that way. So right now, I think is the time to add to T. Rowe. And then once the economy turns around and shows strength, shows that inflation is down, this stock will go back up and that's when I cut off investing in T. Rowe until the next downtrend. So they each offer strengths. Um, and this is what I like to see. This means I'm offering myself some diversification. Uh, they're all in different industries within the financial sector and they all have different strengths with their metrics. Now I mentioned that their automotive segment is their biggest segment and that's a risk and an opportunity in my opinion so i thought 
Let's see what the car market future looks like. So according to the IHS market, during the next five years, unit auto sales will increase a 4.7% compound annual growth rate and hit a new high at 98 million units in 2026. That's great to hear, especially with a company like Ally Financial that's heavy in its automotive segment. Uh, now it says the 2021 in 2021, the breakdown in auto sales by powertrain highlighted the challenges awaiting non-Chinese automakers with 85 to 95 percent of revenues in gas-powered vehicles, meaning we're very heavy on the gas-powered and light on the electric vehicle side. So there's a case that ARC made that says if, now that's a big F, uh, autonomous forecast proves correct, the total vehicle sales are likely to drop roughly 8 percent during the next five years from 78 million units to 72 million units. What they're saying here is that this autonomous vehicle takes over, right? We have more ride sharing, which means more people are going to be using less vehicles. Then it might trend the other way. I don't think that's the case. I stick with that first bullet point. I think the automotive industry will still grow over the next five years, which is a good sign for a company like Ally Financial. If we look at vehicle sales, this was an interesting um, one to look at. You have gas powered in black and electric and kind of that blue purple. So in 2021, gas-powered vehicles, their sales grew 2%, where electric grew 112%. So we are moving towards more and more electric vehicles on the road. Of course, gas-powered uh, vehicles are still dominant, uh, but this just means that Ally Financial has to get creative and innovative to attract that new growing uh, segment of electric vehicles compared to gas vehicles. If we look at global passenger vehicle sales growth, we'll see here that it was downtrending through 2020, but then uptrended in 2021 uh, at a 5.1% growth, which to me is, is interesting. I do see a lot of people around me buying new vehicles still, even though they went massively up in price. Uh, and this shows the proof of that, right? I'm, what I'm seeing around me is really what the case is, which is good for, again, a company like Ally Financial. Now they put this forecast out, ARC did, uh, for 2026 saying that 44% of vehicles will be human-driven gas-powered vehicles, 26% will be human-driven electric vehicles, and 30% will be autonomous electric vehicles. I think that's a stretch. I don't think 30% will be autonomous electric vehicles. I think we're still a ways from getting to that point because there's a lot of safety involved and you know infrastructure to include and think about so I disagree with this fully. I think the autonomous electric vehicles will be a very small part where the human driven electric vehicles will be a bigger part. And then the human driven gas powered vehicles will stay strong, I think, throughout the next decade before it make, takes some massive um, dips in its um, market share. I do want to say, though, another risk with Ally Financial is that Tesla offers its own financing. And so that's going to take away from Ally being able to pr uh, provide that financing. and other big electric vehicle companies or big car companies in general can offer that as well. So that's something that Ally has to get in there and stay, you know, very bullish on in trying to gain that, you know, market share early on before these big companies, you know, grow and people are just like, hey, I'll just go with the company's financing instead of, yes, I'd like to finance through Ally. So they need to become, and they are, they're innovative. I think they will do it. They'll learn to be attractive. Uh, when choosing to, you know, finance things in that aspect. Electric vehicles are providing a risk. You know, if there's a downtrend in the automotive market in general, that'll be a risk for Ally, but it's showing to be strong still. Also, ride sharing is a risk, right? That means more people in less cars. Uh, so they need to maybe think about partnering with those ride sharing companies as well. Uh, so this is their main risk, but I think the opportunity is insurance rates will go higher. That's an opportunity for Ally. And again, if they get in early and take advantages of all these changes, they're going to prove to be uh, strong and take a lot of that market share as well. So my final thoughts on Ally Financial. My new stock is Ally is an innovative, customer-focused company and they're forward-thinking. And to me, that is gold for a company to almost ensure that their future path is growth. So that's one reason why I decided to jump in. Of course, I use their product and love it. Their customer service is awesome. Their app is amazing. It's very easy to use and it's very modern looking. It just, they have innovative things in there like the buckets for your savings. And it's very easy to create and move money over into different buckets. So what I'm saying is I love their product and I know a lot of people do because they're ranked very high on customer satisfaction. Um, the other reason I bought in is they're highly undervalued. 
And I think there's a lot of upside potential with Ally. So I wanted to look at their stock price um, target. And we will see here that uh, right now, you know, of course, they're in the $32 range. So at the low end is 34 and at the high end at 69. Um, in the middle, their stock price will be 46. Their average price will be 46.38 is what analysts agree on, which is a 41.88% upside. Uh, it also, with these analysts from tip ranks, they say it's a strong buy. 13 analysts say buy, two say hold, and one say sell. So that's why with analysts, I say you got to take those with a grain of salt because different analysts with different company will rate it differently. And it's just something I don't weigh heavily. So I took that off my metrics chart. You'll notice something I used to have on there. I'll provide my own, um, you know, kind of analyst rating on my own. And right now I think LA is a strong buy as well. I think there's a lot of upside potential. And we see here that even at the low, their stock price is below that right now. So I think that there's definitely a 40 to 60% upside with the stock over the next year, uh, which is very attractive. Also, I bought because it's adding diversification to my portfolio within my financial stocks. Again, Ally, they're all in different industries. Ally is the consumer finance, Bank of America is in the banking industry, and T. Rose in the capital markets industry. So I added more diversification, which is great. Um, also, I feel that this company will grow in all four of its segments, the automotive, the insurance, the mortgage, and the corporate. Automotive is, of course, the most riskiest. Insurance, I think they have great potential there. Mortgage, I think uh, they still have a little bit more to go on that before that becomes successful, but again, a great opportunity. And corporate financing, a great opportunity as well, You know, loaning out to corporations and things like that. So my five to 10 year plan is Ally Financial. I plan to hold it for five to 10 years, uh, I think this company will do fantastic, and in that time, I'll continually analyze it. Does anything fundamentally change about this company uh, that would cause me to sell out, such as you know, one of their segments is really struggling and they're not really taking on that innovative, bold move to kind of offset that, then I would sell out. There's a lot of reasons why you would sell out of a company, but if they're staying innovative, if they're growing, if they're, you know, we're seeing their sales are growing uh, over this next year or two and stuff, five to 10 years especially, this company I think is gonna provide very strong returns. So I have a five to 10 year plan with this one. And you know, I don't know if it'll be around for the rest of my life type of company like a Microsoft or Amazon, but I do think it has that potential. And so that's what that five to 10 years will buy me, that time to see how this company grows and changes and what opportunities it takes to become a bigger, larger company. But I like this company, I'm very bullish on it. Let me know what you think of Ally Financial and would you buy it? Do you, are you bearish or bullish on it? What do you think of my new portfolio kind of uh, summary that I kind of changed up? Is there anything else you'd like me to add to it or is it looking great? Of course, I'm always going to try to improve and build for you guys. Uh, so yes, let me know all your thoughts. Thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on Mark Arnold's Finance.